What's going on, y'all fam? We back with another message, back with another video. You know what to do. Tap in, tune in, lock in, smash the like button, hit subscribe. If you're new to the channel, I appreciate you for joining the family. If you do not know already, I am an artist. My latest album, Hidden Hills, is out now. All platforms, go follow me on those platforms. If you haven't already, I appreciate all the love and support. My next album is coming out soon. It's looking like my birthday, October 2nd. Y'all keep voting on the community section. I appreciate you guys. All my links are down below in the description box if you want to check out my clothing. If you want to check out other platforms I'm available on, it's all down below. As you can see in the title, how to know if you are chosen by the Most High God. Yes, we are addressing this. This is a topic that I've gone back and forth with. This is a topic that's been watered down a lot. There's a lot of deception in it. Giving you guys some signs on how you know if you are chosen by the Most High God. Now this chosen one term is getting a lot of flack from people. A lot of people don't like the word. A lot of people think when they hear chosen, it means that somebody's better than the next man. That is not what it means. It just means that you are called according to his purpose and you answer that call on your life. So here are some signs that you can kind of reflect on or just, you know, look back at your life and understand if God is calling you. If you are a chosen one out here, these are some of the things that you have experienced or you are going to experience throughout your lifetime that lets you know that yes, you are chosen by the most high God for his purpose and his will to be done. First thing I can say is you have gone through undeniable sufferings in your life. Yes, many of the chosen ones, many of us out there, we have experienced a lot of suffering. We grew up fast. Um, we experienced some things, you could, you could have experienced some things in your childhood that nobody else was um, around you was going through, right? You experienced a lot of suffering early on in your life. A lot of loss, some betrayals, trials, tribulations. This is a, a, a number one sign that you are chosen and you are called by God if you have been through many sufferings in this lifetime. I got some scriptures to back this stuff up for all my people in the comments that want to come at me for doing this chosen one video. Acts 14.22 says, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith and that we must go through much tribulation to enter into the kingdom of God. Yes. So this is why you experience a lot of suffering. You've gone through a lot of trials and tribulations. You know, when you're younger, you could have experienced things like I said, loss. You know, you had to grow up fast. You've been through some things and God puts you through this so you can come out the other side and help others later on in life. Another scripture I have for suffering is 1 Peter 5 and 10. But the God of all grace who hath called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. Yes, chosen one, you've gone through many sufferings. You have gone through a lot of trial, a lot of um, tribulations. Now, everybody goes through things in life, right? We're all human beings. But you have experienced an undeniable suffering. And God wants to do this to perfect you through the sufferings that you've gone through. He wants to give you, he wants to birth purpose in you through the pain, through the tribulations that you've experienced. He wants to strengthen you. And it does make you stronger. A lot of us, when we were younger, we've experienced things. You know, for me personally, I experienced life, death. And so many different things before the age of 20 years old. And a lot of you guys out there have been through stuff like that. And it kind of made you more wise um, early on. And this was to ultimately, it was to shape you. And it was to, you know, you, you had to go through these things so you could help other people uh, find Christ. Right. Point them back to God. Psalm 34 and 19. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. You've gone through a lot of trials, man. Like I said, you've been afflicted your whole life. You've gone through sufferings, you've gone through pain, you've gone through some things, man. Early on, you know, you can reflect back on your life and wonder why you had to suffer more than other people did. Why you always experienced, you know, the short end of the stick is what it felt like. We are called to suffer for his name's sake. 1 Peter 3 and 4, but if ye suffer for righteousness sake, happy are ye. Be not afraid of the terror, neither be troubled. Yes, we've got to understand that you're going to suffer for righteousness sake. When Christ was here, that's what happened to him. He suffered, right? When you are chosen by the Most High God, suffering is a part of this calling and this walk. But when you get rejected, when you experience heartbreak, when you experience all these different things, that's a form of suffering because this world is going to reject anybody who is called and chosen according to his will and purpose. Ye are in the world, but not of it. 1 Peter 4 and 1, For as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, 
arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. For he that has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. So these are all just scriptures backing up sufferings. This is the number one way you know if you have been called, chosen by the Most High God. You've experienced a lot of suffering in your life. You may not understand why when you're going through it, but God has a plan and a purpose through the sufferings, through all of it that you experience. He's going to bring you out the other side. It's like the refiner's fire, right? That's another scripture. I don't have it written down, but it talks about how we go into the fire to come out as gold through the other side. A lot of us have suffered, you know, since childhood. You know, we experienced things that many, many other people around us weren't experiencing. We were going through certain um, battles and trials and errors. And, and tribulations and stuff that a lot of people weren't experiencing and you could wonder why you know you can always wonder why am i the one that's always going through something and everybody else seems to be um doing okay suffering is the number one way you know if you are chosen right people think that this chosen one term and being chosen is all just you know it's so misconstrued and on online especially it just means to be called according to his will and purpose and you answering that call and it comes with a lot of heartbreak trials and air. You think when Christ was here, he didn't go through the worst of the worst. You know, all the disciples had to go through many sufferings. And it was all for the glory and purpose of the Most High God. Second thing I can say on how you know if you're chosen. You just have a knowing. You've had a knowing in you since you were young. Right? And it sounds cliche, but it's the truth. You have a knowing. Right? Almost like a sixth sense that you were you were here to do something. You don't know what it is, but you just don't feel like you fit in and you have a knowing that you're supposed to be doing something great. You're not supposed to just, you know, be average. Just go, you know, wake up, go to work or go to school and just be the average, you know, live that average lifestyle. And it's also a sixth sense. You also have like, you know, people see it as like clairvoyance. People can call you psychic early on. Because you're sensitive to energy. You're sensitive to the spirit realm, even when you're younger. You could have had many spiritual encounters when you were young. You may not have realized it when you were going through it at the time, but now that you reflect, you may have had many spiritual encounters. You could have been sensitive to energy, right? You could have been hearing from God even when you were younger. You could have been experiencing messengers sent your way, right? God uses people. You could have experienced a lot of people speaking into your life. You know, God trying to get um to you through others or, or or just experiencing you know even demonic activity or you know angelic presences you know all these different things it's it's almost like you kind of knew you just have this knowing that you know you're meant for something great you may not understand it you know for almost your whole life until god you know really opens your eyes up though it's a knowing it's a sixth sense people can see it as clairvoyant sidekick because you may even have, you know, some prophecy given to you early on. You may be able to see into the spirit realm. And, and you know, at the time being, you, you really don't understand what it is. But those spiritual encounters, those, that, that knowing is a good sign that you're chosen. A lot of people don't see past the matrix. A lot of people don't see into the spiritual realm. A lot of people don't get to experience that. And you as a chosen one have experienced that pretty much your whole life. The third sign, the third um, way you can know if you're chosen is you have an unnatural resilience about you. Nothing has ever fully broken you. And God has continued to strengthen you to keep going and striving and growing, even through all the suffering you've endured. You have an unnatural resilience about you. You have this strength about you that is placed within you by God himself. Well, there's a lot of stuff that you go through, chosen one, that has broken others. There's a lot of stuff that you've gone through that have taken people out. But you have an unnatural resilience about you. And this gets you envied by a lot of people. Sometimes, you know, I reflect and I, I don't understand how I got through some, some things in my life. Besides the most high God you can relate to this. If you're chosen, you have this resilience about you, man. You know, nothing can truly fully break you because your strength is in Christ. God is always going to continue to strengthen you and keep you going and growing, man. It's just a fact. There's a lot of people out there who see you go through this stuff too. And like I said, you may face some envy for it, envy for it, some jealousy for it, some hatred for it, because people don't understand how, you know, you, you, you can just keep on ticking. It's, it's the most high, honestly, because he wants that purpose to be fulfilled and it will be fulfilled especially if you answer the call in your life he will make sure of it he's going to give you a resiliency about you man he's going to continuously renew your spirit right he's going to pour into your spirit the more you read the more you pray the more you fast you just get that unnatural right it's not a it's not a natural resilience everybody has some grit to them everybody has you know to learn lessons and bounce back from certain things but you have an unnatural resiliency there's some things that you have faced in life that have taken people out Right. And you're still here because you're called according to his purpose. You're chosen one Peter two and nine. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal 
priesthood, a holy nation and a peculiar people. So all the people out there that don't like the chosen one word, 1 Peter 2 and 9 is the number one verse that lets us know. We are a chosen generation and a royal priesthood, a peculiar people. John 15 and 16 also says, ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. That's the fourth sign that you can know if you are a chosen one. He didn't choose God. A lot of us that have been chosen, we were chosen by God himself. We didn't choose God. You know, we had a supernatural encounter. We had something, you know, shake us up in life. And God let us know that he's trying to communicate to us. He's trying to call us according to his purpose. He chooses us. We don't choose him. You, you weren't really seeking after God, maybe. You know, God just kind of found you. And he chose you for his will to be done. A lot of us chosen ones didn't grow up in church. A lot of us didn't grow up in the in religion. A lot of us didn't have that background. Some of us could have. But for the most part, the real chosen ones out there, we did not, you know, we were in darkness. God had to call us. He chose us. We didn't choose him. We were in sin. We were going through all kinds of, you know, sufferings and trials and tribulations. And, you know, God will call on you and choose you so his will can be done. You will just be the vessel that he wants to use. Fifth reason is you never fit in, man. You're the outcast. You are the out. You've been the outcast your whole life. No matter how hard you try to fit in, no matter how much you tried to do what others were doing, it never felt right to you. You always questioned this world. Even when you were younger, you could, you know, reflect back and just um, think about times where you may have, you know, your eyes may have been opening early on in life, where you had questions and you were asking things that other kids weren't asking. You were thinking about things that other kids weren't thinking about. The world never really made sense to you. It was kind of like you didn't understand what you were doing here never fit in you have a deep uh, uh, you, you always had this deep longing for what you are doing here right trying to understand life as a whole thinking deep deep conversations right asking questions you know to even your parents or those around you older people around you you know people took notice of this when you were younger chosen one they they, they knew that you were different right a lot of people wanted you not to not to um, step into that a lot of people will try to cover that up a lot of people will call you, you know, weird or different or, or, or you'll just be the outcast. You won't fit in because you always, you know, you have this deep longing, like I said, and, and for wanting to understand what you're doing on this planet. A lot of people don't think that deep. A lot of people don't take life seriously. A lot of people don't have that mindset towards life. They just kind of do what they're told and go with the flow ever since they were young. Sixth sign, man. Sixth sign you can know if you're chosen is you have a hatred for evil and sin. Yes, man. You have a hatred for evil and sin. Even when you were doing the wrong things, even when you were caught up in the world, you had that um, conviction within you. Felt bad for doing something that you knew. Even if you didn't know at the time, it just didn't feel right. When you were in sin, it didn't feel right. God was tugging at your heart. He was trying to get a hold of you. He was tugging on your soul. When you were doing the wrong things in the world, you never really um, enjoyed it the way others have enjoyed it. This is a good sign that you're chosen, right? God has um, set you apart. You're different. You have a hatred towards evil and sin. Uh, Psalm 4 and 3 says, but know that the Lord has set him apart that is godly for himself. And Psalm 97 10 says, ye that love the Lord hate evil. Yes. So you're set apart, right? You're the outcast. And even when you try to fit in and you're, you're in sin, you're living these ways, it doesn't feel right. It never sat in your spirit right. You always felt like, man, what's wrong with me? Why can't I do what everybody else is doing? Every time I try to, I still just feel wrong. It feels off. It doesn't, I don't enjoy it the way others enjoy it. You know, when I was in the world and I was trying to smoke and drink and party and do all these things and hang out with chicks and hang out with my bros and go do all the, you know, wrong things, people persecuted me because they knew, they could sense that it wasn't sitting in my spirit right. I wasn't enjoying it the way they were enjoying it. You can relate to this as a chosen one. It's how you know you're called. God's trying to set you apart. God doesn't want you fitting in with these other people. And it can happen from a young age, right? Everyone's different. It can, it can happen at different ages for all of us. But for me, I can tell you, you know, even when I was in sin, I hated it. I didn't like how it made me feel. And I always thought I was weird or different for that. I always felt like, what's wrong with me? Why can't I smoke? Why can't I do this and not feel some type of way in my and deep in my soul? It's because you're chosen. You're called for a higher, a higher purpose in his life. You were never supposed to just be consumed in sin and do what the world is doing. Another um, sign that you're chosen is you have a hunger for purpose and understanding, right? This kind of goes... Back to, you know, um, you being not, not fitting in and always questioning things, but you always had this deep hunger for understanding. You just wanted to understand, like, what are we doing here? Why am I here? What is, what, what, what's the meaning of life? 
right? All these questions you can ask that a lot of people don't ask. And, and even if they do ask it, they don't take, they don't take it as, as serious as you do. You've always taken it pretty serious. You've always tried to understand, you know, the meaning of life. You know, what, what is, why are you here? You have a deep um, longing for purpose, truth, trying to figure things out. You've always seeked after growing and, 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 and wanting to do something great. Isaiah 43 and 10 says, Ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen. Yes, so God's going to allow you to witness him moving in your life. He's going to allow you to witness things that is going to shock you, but you're going to be able to, you know, be his witness now to where you can go and tell others about what God has done for you in your life, even through the sufferings. And the more that you seek after him, the more that you knock, the more that you, you know, have these questions, he eventually will let you know that he's with you and he will reveal things to you, right? You'll be, you'll be his witness. He will make sure that you experience some things that say, hey, this was only God. And, and this can get you hated, right? This can get you um, looked at a certain way. Because like I said, most people don't take life that serious. Most people just, just do what they're told, man. You know, most people don't um, have that that grit about them to to want to do something great. The sign that you can tell if you're chosen is you always kind of had a rebellious spirit in a way against authoritative figures who wanted to control your life and destiny. If someone was trying to tell you to do something and you went and did it just to like please them, you kind of had this, you know, knowing in you like, I'm not supposed to be doing this. And I'm only doing this just to please these people. I'm only I'm only doing this to like satisfy my mom or my dad or my brothers and like make them happy. But you kind of always had that like re rebellion in you because you knew that this wasn't what God had for you. It can also get you persecuted because you're not submitting to the authorities of this matrix. The only authority that you submit to is God. This matrix has authoritative figures in it, teachers, um, all different things to try to dictate who you're going to become in this life. But you almost have this like, it's that knowing in you that gets you to rebel against things that are not lining up with what God wants you to do. It's that deep understanding. You know, you can relate this back to like nine to five jobs um, growing up, you know, not really um, wanting to do school. The school system never really made sense to you. All these different things, right? It's kind of like you were known as a rebel. When Christ was here, he was the biggest rebel, man. He was doing everything opposite of what this world wanted him to do. Even the, even religion and stuff like that. This is another sign that you're chosen. That rebellious spirit against things that are not lining up with God's will and purpose in your life. And a lot of people don't like that about you because people want control. Matrix wants control. Ever since we once we're born into this world, you know, this matrix wants to take control. The devil wants to take control. He wants to give you his identity. The devil wants you to have his identity in him. You know, this world doesn't want to see you step into Christ's identity and what he tells you you're here to do. So you have that rebellious spirit about you, man. And it gets you, you know, um, you won't fit in because of it. You're not going with the sheep. You're set apart. Another sign you can tell if you're chosen is you always come out of things that others may have not been able to come out of. You have an unnatural favor on you. Yes, that's how you know if you're chosen. You have this unnatural favor. You can reflect back. Sometimes we don't even realize it until later on in life and you reflect back. God has given you chance after chance. You've had more grace than others. I can tell you right now, this is a real thing. God doesn't have favorites. He loves everybody. He has mercy and grace for everybody. But when it comes to grace, when it comes to certain callings that are on certain people's lives, everybody is different. So there is more favor and grace given to, you know, various different people. We can see it in the Bible. Not everybody was, you know, had the same purpose as a King David or a King Solomon. Not everybody had um, the same purpose as, you know, like a Ruth or an Esther. These were like high callings. These were big purposes that God may have had to extend a little bit extra grace, you know, some more mercy here and there. Others have gone through similar things and didn't receive the same amount of favor and grace that you receive. And you got to take note of this as a chosen one. You got to understand that, you know, you've had God has helped you through so many situations and people have seen this. And a lot of people get angry and upset about it. But you do have a favor on your life. That's how you know if you're chosen. The unnatural favor at times where God has pulled you through situations that should have took you out, man. God will extend grace and mercy and favor and he will keep. You know, he will keep his hand on you through everything. Even when you were out here doing the wrong things, even when you were living in your sin and in your mistakes, it's an unnatural favor and grace on your life. Second, third, fourth, fifth chances. And some people only get one or two chances. Favored by the Most High God. And the last thing I can say is you have the word written on your heart, man. This was a big one for me. But, you know, the Bible speaks about it. I didn't write the um, verse down, so I don't know which verse it is exactly. But basically, 
the word will be written on your heart, man. And before you even come into Christ, you may start showing signs. You know, you might start speaking about things. It may be in your own way, right? Your own lingo or, or the way you carry yourself, your integrity, however it may look. But it shows you that the word of God is already written on your heart, even prior to you even maybe reading the word. God has written the word on our hearts. So our character, you know, the development, all the things that we need to go through, it's kind of already put within us by God. He chose us before we were in the womb, so he already knew us. A lot of us out here had the word written on our heart before we even um, had an understanding of the word ourselves, and we didn't know it. You know, but God will reveal this to you, and you'll know that you're chosen, you know, for his purpose and will. A lot of people can just, you know, may, they may say that, you know, you may give off good energy your whole life. People may just like being around you when you were growing up. They have um, carried yourself a certain way. You know, people saw you as a light. You know, people like to be around you, man. It's because, you know, God had, you know, he, he, he uses you to minister to people in so many different ways, even before you are fully in your purpose and in your calling. You have the word written on your heart, man. You know, there was a lot of the times where I was growing up, you know, I, I was coming into the faith and stuff and people were telling me that I was saying things that were in the Bible and I didn't even know it, right? I was um, talking about things that the Bible would talk about and I didn't never read the Bible a day in my life or I would carry myself a certain way. It would be an action I took in my life and people would that were in the faith noticed that and they would tell me, you know, and I think it was God using them to minister to me to let me know like, hey, I'm trying to get a hold of you even when I was blind to it. Where would be written on your heart, man? You'll carry yourself as God will have you, um, you know, in situations and stuff where you will be different and carrying yourself differently than others, whether that looks like your kindness, you know, integrity, patience whatever it looks like for you you know and, and this is a great way to know if you're chosen being a chosen one man it comes with a lot of pain and, and a lot of loss a lot of suffering a lot of things but there's a lot of blessings in it right and i know it gets all kinds of <laughs> people don't like the term right i even myself have recently said you know i don't want to do chosen one videos it's just because it's being watered down um people are using this stuff in the new age community you know, a lot of people are thinking that they're chosen just, you know, based on some some false religious stuff that they're doing or, or you know, idol worship and false gods. And, you know, it's kind of like more of an ego trip for them. Being chosen ain't nothing sweet, man. You know, but it's, it's a, the biggest blessing at the same time. Not everybody is going to be chosen. And it's just a fact. It doesn't make you better than anybody else. You know, everyone's called. Not everyone's chosen. Many are called if you were chosen, man. And God... You know, hopefully this video is just kind of just sum some stuff up to, to make you, you know, kind of reflect and say, like, you know, am I, am I being called? Am I chosen by God for his will to be done in my life? Ultimately, it's our jobs to answer that call. That's why everybody isn't chosen, because not everybody wants to suffer, man, for his name's sake. Not everybody wants to go through many trials and afflictions and, you know, be set apart and lose friends and come out the matrix and be hated for his name's sake. And everybody's going to reject you and all these different things you're going to have to go through many sufferings, man. You know, so being a chosen one is a, the biggest blessing ever, man, because eternity is what matters. Relationship with him is what matters more than anything else. You know, but at the same time, it comes with a lot, man. It's not just, oh, you know, chosen ones aren't just, oh, YouTubers. Like, no, it's so much deeper than that, man. And that's why I kind of, you know, lately was saying I don't like doing, I don't like the chosen one. I obviously have a tattooed on my face, right? <laughs> and... You know, I'll kind of do a breakdown about my tattoos too to kind of give you guys an understanding of why I got them. Do I regret them all? Yeah, I regret them. I know people ask all the time. But, you know, they're reminders for me because I was in low places and I, I had to remind my God had to remind me. And I, I remind myself at times, you know, with these different scriptures, like I am chosen. You are chosen. You're a chosen one. Even if people want to say that you're arrogant for using that word, you're prideful, you're this, you're that, you're not better than anybody else. That's not what chosen means, man. You know what I'm saying? There's scripture to back this stuff up. 1 Peter 2 and 9, go read it. You know, but ye are a chosen generation. Um, John 15 and 16, ye have not chosen me, I have chosen you. You know, so the people out there that don't like this word, it's a real thing, man. You know, um, and you will know if you're chosen by the things I've listed off in this video. You made it to the end of the video. I love you and I thank you. Make sure you smash the like button down below for me. Say a prayer for your brothers out there, man. Say a prayer for your sisters and say a prayer for yourself. And you already know what it is. Till next time, man. It's your boy.